Right, we're both recording. So, 10th of February. Is it the 10th? I'm looking yeah, at Yeah, Shanti's birthday. birthday from Aquarius Rising Africa. Happy birthday, Shanti. Happy birthday, it's Shanti. Birthday. <laughs> yes, it's a real friend. It's really interesting. So, it was your birthday last Friday. It's Shanti's from Aquarius Rising Africa today. And it's my friend, my lovely, lovely friend, Susie, who's the world expert on dragons. It's her birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday to you for tomorrow, Susie. Happy birthday, Susie. I'd love um, to hear her talk about dragons. Oh, she knows so she does a lot of um gets a lot of messages from dragons. So I hope she doesn't mind me saying that. I'm sure <laughs> she doesn't. So anyway, before we get into a discussion today, how are you doing? I'm good. I think I think we're all kind of I know we spoke for a long time yesterday, Catherine offline. I think I think we're all feeling the vibrational weirdness of the stat, it feels staticky. And I told you yesterday, like, you know, my dog, Ravi, he was behaving very strange. And I think a lot of animals are behaving strange. And when I lived in California, in the background, the same thing there. You're like, this fine. <laughs> my sister's down there. They've just got back from a very long walk because I've got a very busy afternoon and evening of recording. So they've had their long walk and they're exhausted. Aww. But yeah, isn't it weird? There's a lot of it going on. My horses have just been sort of, galloping across the field and things like that in quite kicking their head their legs up in glee actually but yeah um, yeah interesting vibrations isn't it so much going on and so much backwards forwards is it isn't it isn't it isn't it how are you feeling in the headspace how are you feeling in terms of where you're being drawn to put your focus Bryce I want to focus on um what what it, our own and we kind of spoke about this before we started uh filming our, our every individual I think the the biggest I guess, deprogramming we all have to do is allowing somebody to dictate stuff for us and understanding what manipulation really is and what free will really is, which I know that we, that's what we were going to talk about a little bit today is like understanding where we have boundaries with other people when other people try to control our own choices and our own free will. And that's something that each, it's like that Michael Jackson song, man in the mirror. It's like, you, we all have to take accountability for our own actions to really move into a new, a new world of more positive energy. It starts with us individually taking accountability for how we do try to manipulate or how we do try to coerce somebody into like giving up their free will in order to do what we want. And in my opinion, when we do stuff like that, whether we're conscious of it, subconscious or conscious of it, um, it's because of our own fear. Of our own of our own fragile state and when we try to manipulate other people's free will it's because i think we're afraid of our of our own divinity and the fact that maybe the universe doesn't support us like they support other people which is simply not true the universe supports every person and we have to have that respect for other people's lives too if, if that makes sense i hope that makes sense oh it makes massive sense to me and it's so interesting because you say we would not watch we talk about text we've got so such a list of topics we want to talk about one thing I've been noticing so much over the last sort of month or two, and I know it can seem quite picky to people and it can be quite irritating when people sort of pay too much attention to language, but we know that language is a spell. And what I've been noticing a lot recently is how many times, whether it's people who are doing videos or whether it's people leaving the comments, are using language like we must all or you must or we have to or we need to. So need must things. When anyone's telling you what you need to do, what you have to do, what you must do, however trivial it might seem, people might say, oh, I just didn't think about my words. But actually, look at the Jamacha side of things. Look at things. There's a reason why we say these things, why we write these things. And there's an energy behind that, isn't it? And that's yeah. almost like the subtler side of things of what you were just talking about. It's coming through at so many different levels and we become so used to it that we don't need it. We don't notice it, but I've noticed how many people are, you know, sending me stuff and things, which I really appreciate, but you need to do this. You must do this. You must contact this person. You must listen to this. You have to do this. And I'm like, Whoa, hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like the, one of my favorite Alan Watts quotes when somebody, I think I've mentioned it before when, you know, this big question, like, what is life? Why are we alive? What's the point of life? And he basically said, the point of life is to be alive. The only yeah. thing you need to do is live. That's it. And, um, and yeah, I, I think that, you know, I, I've been noticing lately too, um, when people have a habit sometimes of stating their opinions as facts and yes. I've been trying to be better about that myself, saying like, in my opinion, 
or I think this way saying that this is, this is just my perspective. It doesn't mean it's the truth or it has to be your perspective. And I think that's something you and I both like Catherine is hearing other people's perspectives because when you hear other people's perspectives, it shapes, it either makes you believe your own opinion more or, or allows you to shift your opinion a little bit because opinions are always changing. And I do think sometimes when people state their opinions as facts, whether they're aware of it or not, that also is a form of manipulation. Um, you know, and, and it's kind of like what we're seeing with the uh, whole um, circus happening around us at the moment, uh, won't say too much about it, where there is a lot of propaganda and a lot of um, manipulating facts in order to coerce people into doing things that they wouldn't do under clear, clear headspace. And, um, you know, I just, I think about people who do like to manipulate regardless of whether they're aware of it or not. And I, I just think like, I would never want to have a life where the people in my life, regardless of whether they were a spouse, a partner, a friend, a lover, or whatever were with me just because I had done something to coerce them into being with me. You know, I would want my people around me to be with me because they like me, you know, they, you know, and they feel safe with me. You know, it, what's, you know, it's, you never remember what people say to you, but you always remember the way they make you feel. And I remember my eighth grade teacher told us that, um, I think it was a Maya Angelou quote, but I don't remember, but the whole, my whole life I've been like, that. I, I don't want people to feel like I'm tricking them or like I'm trying to get something from them. You know, I want people in my life to want to be with me because, or hang out with me or whatever, you know, because they actually like my company and I like theirs because when you're in that relaxed state of non-manipulation, not trying to control each other's minds, that's when the vibration can raise because you're both respecting each other's sovereignty. And that's a true relationship, isn't it? And I think it's a really, really important point that you've you've made them and and there's with all the stuff that's going on one of the things that just hasn't sat with me and this isn't a, an opinion in terms of people are doing things right or wrong but has just never sat right with me is the fact let's take the black hats the white hats and let's simplify it and you know well they have to do this because they're playing a game against the black hats therefore they have to play against their own game well no they don't so, for example, my daughter played a brilliant match football this weekend. And what you do is you look at your opposition, and if they've got a certain play, then there's so many different strategies you can employ. There's never just one strategy. And if they've got a certain game of play and you want to disrupt their play, you don't do that by playing the same game as them. Right. And that might not be a very good analogy, but, the, you know, the point is, is people say, well, they have to do it because of this. And it's the same thing as what we're talking about. And do you know what? Throughout this whole thing, and, you know, I don't know whether I'm right or not, only time's going to tell, but it just doesn't ring true for me. You don't, you know, with fire with fire. You, there's so many different ways. There's never one. It's never solution A or solution B. There's a million other options in between. And I think this thing about people stating their opinions as facts is really, really important because whoever's listening to whatever videos, whatever information, reading whatever books, they are all just an opinion. Science is just an opinion at that point of time, and it's never a black or white right. And normally, in hindsight, you get more information that might either back up that opinion or change it completely. Absolutely. And I think this is where you can see the people that are sort of talking about things in terms of just wanting to discuss it and keep the debate and the open mind and look at the world through a new pair of eyes against this is what's happening and that's a fact. And it's like it's becoming more and more obvious to me. I don't know if it's just because I'm shifting and I'm getting more aware of it, but then you and I both seem to be noticing this a lot. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I see people all the time. Like, and I've said this, I think on your show a couple of times now, Catherine, like I'm bored with mm. the matrix. I'm bored with talking about the competition that happened in November of, you know, a couple of years ago. I'm trying to be careful what I say. I'm bored of that because I'm realizing now that that was just static over here from what's really happening over here. When over here seems to be again, in my opinion, so much more exciting. Yeah. And I agree with you. Like, and I think sometimes, and I know, I know there's this weird perception. I think a lot of people have, you know, especially when we're used to watching TV or seeing movies, but in the YouTube world, like we're Catherine, you and I are just two girls, like normal average 
human beings that Absolutely. decided to open up a platform. Any information we have is just from our own research or our own conclusions. And it's not, doesn't necessarily mean that it's correct. And when I started my channel and started researching more of these historical stuff, I did it because I knew something was wrong and I wanted to review things and I wanted to see what other people had to say. If I could do present the research, let me get the feedback of what you guys think about this, because I don't know what the hell's going on. And I want to hear what you have to say too. But when people come in and say, this is what's happening, this is what the white hats are doing. Well, first of all, let me just put this out there. This might sound kind of catty, but if we can figure out what the white hats are doing, exactly. they're not that smart. <laughs> I'm a little concerned, you know? So I've accepted in my own path that, that there are going to be things that we're not going to understand right now. When people walk around and say, this is for fact, what's happening that I tend to kind of back away from that because how do you know? Yeah. And, it, and, and are you, is that coming from an ego place or not? It's like, and when we're saying, I know when we talked last time and we were saying we're bored and got a little bit of backlash for that. But again, we are just two people having our coffee chat mm -hmm. on camera and expressing opinions and going through the roller coaster like everyone else. And the thing is, just because we've reached a stage where we're bored doesn't mean that we're criticizing other people that are still in that fact finding. So when I was a child and when I had my children and I was teaching them how to ride a bike, when you learn to ride a bike, a lot of children put stabilizers on mm -hmm. to help them stop falling yeah. over. And then as they get more confident, you take the stabilizers off. And then once you can ride a bike, you don't ever go back to your stabilizers normally. Absolutely. So this stage we've been, we've gone through having our stabilizers on, we've gone through taking the stabilizers off and falling over a few times. And now we're at a stage where we're on our journey, where we're riding our bikes more on our own. And I think this is the thing is everyone is at a different stage. I wouldn't expect a three year old to not have stabilizers on. Right. And exactly. it's like you've, you're all on your own unique stages of discovery. And there's some bits where I need to put my stabilizers back on because there's some areas of this information that I'm going into now. So you and I had a lovely chat with Mark Atwood the other day. And I have got, which I've never really paid attention to before, I've got really fascinated by the true history of how long have humans been around in different areas of the world, how the world was formed. Now, it's hysterical because my husband's really into geology, archaeology, things like that. I never have before. And now I'm really fascinated into it because I want to know why it's all been covered up. Same, same. That's the whole, yes. But I am so a magical about us and they had to hide it. Magical. And yeah. I want to, I am very much putting my stabilizers on them because I am starting right from the beginning on that because I have very little knowledge about all this. And it's exciting. Like as every time I go to the museum, and you know, when I took the kids to the museum and things, I used to think, well, why are they not showing us real dinosaur things? And I've 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 had this question, not are dinosaurs real or not? Because we're told there are, but why are we not showing the real evidence? This all seems a little bit Disney to me. Now, again, that it, these are areas that I'm just starting to explore and I'm very much at the beginning. And so I'm taking in lots of information for lots of different things. And I'm not taking any of it as fact. Right. I'm just I'm feeling into it and thinking, does that resonate with me or do I need to ask more questions there? Yeah. Um, and that's just the stage the way I do it. And just because that's the way you and I do it doesn't mean it's the way other people need to do it. But everything that's coming to me. I'm now feeling into it, not just intellectualizing it and sort of thinking, does this sit comfortably with me or not? And if it's a not, it's like, okay, I need to, I really want to do more research on this. You know, even yes. I used to do then, but I was using it for me. And I will say all the stuff that I'm like, say I'm bored of now, I am bored of, but that was where we started. Like that, that exactly. stuff in the beginning had to happen in order to nudge you to take a look at, at the situation with a different perspective. And I still have, you know, the only videos on my channel that have been taken down are the ones that YouTube took down. I've left everything up on my channel as far as when I was talking about that stuff more and looking into that stuff more. But, at, but again, something has happened and I think it started happening to me maybe six months ago and I, I've always had spiritual experiences. I know you have, Catherine. I've always known that, you know, that's what led me off to India was because I was having so many spiritual psychedelic experiences that I wanted to figure out what was going on. But now at this point, through all this like nastiness of the matrix that got us to where to wake up, you guys know what we're talking about, something kind of evolved out of that. Whereas like you said, I started going, 
well, why are they doing this? Mm. Why are they trying to fool us? What is it about us that's so powerful that they would need to try to keep us down? Why are they manipulating us? And that has opened up a beautiful path, a beautiful path. Mm -hmm. um, of, of who we potentially are and the true history of, of our civilization as humans, you know, and the fact, I mean, I was so ecstatic when I realized in my opinion, from some research that the 12 tribes of Israel were galactic mm -hmm. and it made sense. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is, this is so exciting. So this junk DNA they say we have is actually going back to possibly our galactic roots. And we have family that's not even here on this plane of existence because of that. And like that, whoa, like that's so exciting. And that is where I am interested. That, that's, that's why I'm bored with the matrix because I want us to figure out who we really are. Because I think going back to what we started with the manipulation, try to control people, try to control their free will. If you understand that there is something really special about you, then you also understand that there's something special about everybody around you too. That same spark of life inside of you is in, behind the eyes of your friends, your animals, the trees. And so you start to respect people more because they're just as special and unique as you are. And when you have that understanding, you stop wanting to control other people. You stop wanting because you understand that everybody here has a purpose. And that's where I want to start looking at. That's, that's where I want to go now. Exactly. I want to figure out this earth. Like I had an awesome conversation with David Cohen yesterday, who you introduced us to, and he was talking about I got into talking about all these different, you know, land masses where there, as we talked about with Mark Atwood, where there's possibly giants and it's like, w our earth is so magnificent and we don't even understand the half of it. And that's where I feel like my, and maybe it's because we are getting closer to that flip that some of us yeah. just feel the need to go to a more positive um, place of, of growth. But yes, people who are just now waking up, they're going to have to start from the beginning again. And that's why I know I've left my videos up where I talked more about what was happening. The 1% their religious practices will say, you know, I've left that up because that is, that, that is a necessary stepping stone. But at this point, I want to shift forward. I want to figure out, like, I want to talk about dragons. I want to talk about giants. I want to talk about the galactics because that is exciting to me. And that's coming from a place of love for humanity. And also, I think it's exactly that. And you can see just by a body language. And, and I encourage people to look at themselves and say what excites them. And for some people, it will be this finding out and exploring and going down the rabbit hole. So I know when I first started watching Fall of the Cabal and, and now you've got Nick um, Alviar's Good Lion TV, which has got all this stuff collected in one place, which is absolutely wonderful. And you've got all these amazing resources that have sprang up over the last few years to really help people on this journey. And I, I know when I started down that journey, I had that awe about that. I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And so it's recognizing in yourselves, isn't it? It's like where you are and being really happy with that. And I think going back to the thing about the sort of manipulation and that we started off, I think that's where you can see it's like anytime someone tries to ridicule someone else for where they are on their own individual personal journey, then that sets alarm bells off for me yeah. because you, we've got no right to ridicule anyone else. We've all been there, got the T-shirt. And as I said, there's some areas where I feel quite knowledgeable about now and there's other areas which I've got so little knowledge on completely. Um, and I think that's absolutely fine. It's fine for us to all be where we need to be, but to recognize it. And I was having a conversation with some family members last night about, I'm so pleased because of the work I've done over the last sort of 10, 15 years that I can recognize so quickly now where I'm slipping into bad habits when I'm in the company of people that don't make me feel good or don't bring out the best in me and all these things. And and that's not blaming other people. It's just now I've got to a stage where it doesn't mean I don't do these things or make mistakes, but I can recognize it so much quicker and course correct so much quicker. And then it's not a big issue. 
Yeah. It's like uh, our friend Tamara, my favorite mantra of her is cancel, cancel. Like when you yes. start to see those things and you, you know, we know our thoughts are powerful. We know we just don't understand how, I don't think we understand exactly how powerful our thoughts really are. And when you feel that coming, just cancel, 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 cancel. And, um, and yeah, and I would say too, I, I believe, you know, people who feel the need to control and manipulate, I think that's coming from a, a place of fear within them again, yeah. their own insecurities. And so, and again, that's something that only each individual person can work on themselves. And mm -hmm. so I would suggest, it's just my suggestion that including myself, we'd be including that we all start just working on ourselves and try to like break the bondage that we try to put on other people or bind other people to us because of insecurities we may have, because even if, through manipulation, those insecurities are not going to go anywhere. They're not going to go anywhere until you work on them. And I think going into a new tomorrow, a, a new earth, it's going to be required that we, we have to start releasing our, our, our control of situations and just surrendering to, to, to divinity and to the, I promise you, I promise you, in my opinion, I promise you that source creator gave you purpose. You don't have to manipulate anybody or anything to not to, to, to be enough. You are enough. You don't, as you said at the beginning, you don't have to do anything. You are enough as you yeah. are. And having that feedback, I mean, what I love about our relationship and some of our other friends we've got is we can have really good discussions about these things. And I've got, I was out for a walk with my lovely daughter, who is amazing. <laughs> so wise for her age it's unbelievable um all the years i spent on coaching i should just talk to lois but in all seriousness we've noticed a huge shift over the last six months in our dogs lola and indy now lola and indy have got very special they're just just a beautiful very special energy about them and they're so much more relaxed at the moment. Now, they've always been relaxed in this situation, but sometimes out and about, if they meet people with sticks or um, Lola sometimes with some other dogs and things. And at the moment, she's just transcended so much of that. And a lot of it is because of me, because of the work that I've been doing. Now, I'm not taking credit for Lola, but I'm saying what she was doing is a lot of what she was doing is picking up my energy, my fuzzy energy, because if I'm out and I'm thinking about this and that and some of the things and interactions and conversations I'm having are not in my highest interest. And then that, of course, affects how confident she feels being with me. And now, because I'm sort of getting better and better and better at resting in this, as I said, other people are just really noticing of just how much more relaxed she is when we're out on awards and things, because I'm not giving off that high static so to speak yeah yeah oh totally well that was funny i think i told you Catherine, on a private call with with my my little boy because he i've always thought he was high anxiety because he was a rescue and there was some abandonment issues he possibly had and before i met you Catherine, we were working with a trainer and the trainer kept telling me no he's feeding off of your anxiety you're the one that has the anxiety he's fine yeah, it hit me so hard. And, um, and so I try to work on that with him, like being cool, calm and collective around him. And I, as we started off saying, like yesterday, he was, he like went back into puppy phase where he was pulling the recycling out, want to chew on everything. But I think, but it was like, it wasn't like, he, I could tell he wasn't doing it because he was anxious about anything. There was like, yes. was like your, your course, the horse is kicking. There was like a, an excitement. Exactly. And when I lived in California, right after uh, college, um, now, everybody knows California has bad earthquakes. Uh, here in Georgia, there is a fault line. Sometimes we have them, but you don't really feel them. And I will tell you, knowing people who moved to California as an adult, people born in California, there's a huge difference for how they handle earthquakes. People born there um, sleep through them, whereas I would freak out every time. Um, but the animals, whenever an earthquake would come, if there was a cat, or they would, they would tell you. They could feel yeah. it coming that the earthquake was coming. And I feel like that's what the animals are feeling now. They're feeling the fact that we're about to move into a new, a new timeline with a higher vibration. And I think there's an excitement coming from them. And, and what's so pure is I think as human beings, going back to the manipulation, we do carry a lot of like unnecessary fear. Yeah. Whereas animals are able to surrender more to the vibration of divinity. 
Yeah. So and then like, the fool, shake it off. Yeah, they just shake it off. I mean, I mean, Ravi was out there celebrating chewing up the recycling again, just like he did as a, as yeah. a puppy. So, so you know, it, it was like he was excited about something was happening. And I even told you, so I was like, I need to check the Schumann residence because I like something is changing right now. And, yeah, we can um, check that because I haven't checked that for a while. Please um, let us know what it's like, everyone. But it, it is great, isn't it? And I think that would be my message for um, anyone that it resonates with is tomorrow's cancel, 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 cancel. So just, you know, looking at what in your life do you want to cancel, cancel? And if it's me, that's fine. <laughs> you know, but it is really, really important. What are you needing to? And just because you need to cancel, cancel something now doesn't mean that you won't want to go back to it in six months' time. I think that's a really important thing, isn't it? We're talking about right here, right now. Mm -hmm. What is serving you? What isn't? Where do you as an individual need to be? And the more we recognize that, I really notice a difference in the more, the more people are confident in that in themselves, the more they react through a love and heart center to other people that they're interacting with. Yeah, it's whatever. I think you. everybody needs to wake up in the morning. And I've been doing this myself. So because I've watched Taylor, our friend Taylor Moon do this, and I love it. Is this for my highest good? Is this for the highest good of the collective? And, um, and and if somebody is, if you're watching something on YouTube and they, they're they stating all these things happening and it's scaring you, just remember that none of us really know what the hell's going on. So it's just that person's opinion. So don't let it yeah. scare you. It's just that person's opinion. Yeah, fantastic. So talking of moving into the love vibration, we are just about to do a really lovely um, talk with Lucy Davis, who is all about moving into the love vibration. So you will see that up on both our channels later. And I'm, I'm in wonder today. I really am in wonder. Nature's coming out and um, I'm loving the exploration. I'm loving the new awareness that I'm feeling about myself. And I'm loving the impact that my animals are giving me really good feedback on what's working for me and what isn't. So that's really helpful. Oh, thanks, Bryce. It's always such fun. We've, I keep meaning to make myself an actual cup of coffee for this. I've got some really gorgeous organic coffee with much mushrooms in. So <laughs> we might actually have a proper coffee. I'll make a note in the planner to make sure to prepare. I know. <laughs> I, just, I don't know where the time is going. I've said this before, but it's absolutely flying, but in a great way. Every day is just like wonderful at the moment. It's the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. See you yeah. soon, everyone. Thanks. Bye, guys. I hope you enjoyed the coffee chat.